Hi, it's Slater. I've begun collaborating with young people on another channel, including a video about making boomerangs from commonly available materials. The boomerang is lightweight and unlikely to hurt people or break windows, and the turning radius is so small that you can fly it in a small yard. This video is about a mass production version of the boomerang if you want to make lots of them quickly, plus a cardboard indoor boomerang and other variations. It's bare bones, so you'll have to get information about how to adjust and throw boomerangs from the original video. I cut out the airfoils from manila file folders first, and the width is a little wider, 7 centimeters instead of 6 centimeters wide that the other design uses. It's best to orient them this way, not like this, because paper has a grain. It's rough when folded the wrong way, and it wants to spring back so it doesn't stay folded and pulls off the tape. So I cut lengthwise first, 13 centimeters wide, then I trim the end at 29 centimeters, then 22, 15, and 8. Then I have to turn 180 degrees and trim the last side. The airfoils need to be folded lengthwise at 4 centimeters. You could bend them on a corner like this, but it's so fast to make a simple bending jig from an existing folded corner of a food packaging box but double check that this edge is parallel to the fold. You can fold three or four at a time, then crease them hard. I glue the spars upside down. I prefer to use the big 30 watt glue gun for mass production, even though they are higher temperature and can give nasty burns. I tape a penny on the glue pattern to consistently get the right amount of dihedral. I write the T at the end of a tongue depressor, flip it over, and tape it facing down at the hub. I get glue on both tongue depressors at the same time and make sure I press on the hub to make a good glue connection, but also at the other ends so they slant down a little to the table for dihedral. Even hot glue ought to have half a minute or so to harden, so I start working with previously glued spars. First I'll show taping on the airfoils, then I'll show gluing them on, which is much faster, but takes more skill, and it's hard to fix if you make a mistake. For a right-handed boomerang, make sure the T is up. Hold the boomerang so a spar points away from you. Line up the end of the tongue depressor with the end of the paper. Wedge the left edge of the tongue depressor against the fold. Hold it there while you tape along the other edge. I find it's easier to tape half at a time. Push all the tape down hard. Flip it over so the T is on the bottom. It doesn't matter how you orient it. Tape the edges of the airfoils together again half at a time and press hard. Press on the front too to make the airfoil as thin as possible. If you're making a left-handed boomerang, the T is still up, the narrow part of the airfoil still goes under, but the fold and the wide part goes on the right. If you glue the airfoils instead of taping, you have to move fast after you get the glue on and press hard. When you have all the airfoils on, you're ready to test. We worked on a design made from a single sheet of manila file folder, hoping it would be a warm-up for bigger boomerangs. When it worked to its full potential, it was very impressive. The signature trick is making it circle behind and blindly drop into your hand from the other side, but getting it perfectly adjusted can be a challenge. It's really fun and empirical, but very subtle changes can have a big effect, so consider it to be an advanced project rather than a beginning one.
If you just cut out the shape, establish which side will be on top, and give it a bit of dihedral, then it sort of flies with very little effort. When you throw, make sure the top faces you. It lays over right away and sort of hovers down, which is kind of cool. To make it really fly circles, you need to bend in an airfoil shape to the wings, folding down a little from the inside corners to points at the end. The wider segment is for the trailing edge, called angle of attack. The fold goes to the middle of the end. Bend it on a corner of a book or something. If you bend it too much, then there's too much drag and the boomerang stops spinning mid-flight. So flatten it out a bit. Bending a narrower segment on the front, called camber, also reduces drag and increases flight efficiency. It goes from the root to a point between the front edge and the first mark. Getting the balance between the multiple variables of dihedral, angle of attack, and camber is the hard part. The most subtle change can make a huge difference. It takes lots of experimenting and lots of practice. There ought to be some life lesson in there, but we just think it's fun. Going back to the bigger boomerang, when we first started, we sandwiched the tongue depressors between paper hubs, also made from manila folder. That kind of hub does make the boomerang a little bigger and I present it here in case it's better for certain applications, but it took longer, and if you threw it into something, then it was more likely to break. Back then, we also had another method of making airfoils. By letting a little paper stick out a few millimeters in front, you can even form the camber to undercut the bottom a little. The edges meet at the back, so you can make an airfoil with a smoother bottom that more closely resembles airplane wings, but they are considerably more time consuming to make. Taking a step back, look at these amazing creations. All of them really fly. If you experiment, there's a lot of room for creativity. Happy flying to you.